Hi everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Talk. Well, today I've got a very special guest. It's Mike France has kindly joined me again from Christopher Ward. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, Sam. Good to be back. Yes, yeah. Always a favourite interview for me to do and also a favourite of our audience because we always get a lot of great comments. So keep them coming, guys, in the comment section down below. We've got a ton to talk about because since last time you were on, which didn't seem that long ago, but so much has happened in the world of Christopher Ward, I think. So much has happened in the world as well. I think it's been six months, six, at least six months since we spoke last. What have been the highlights for you over the last sort of six months? Ooh, um, well, if we're talking product highlights, I mean, um, the the launch of the C60 concept, um, yeah. which I'm, I'm wearing on my wrist, number 13 was mine, which we launched at the back end of October, early November in a limited edition of 210 pieces, uh, which sold out incredibly quickly. And I think established us as a in, a in a slightly different space than we'd been in before. And this was um, or is, you know, high horology in many ways. Um, and it was a, it's an exceptional piece. And it was incredibly well received by people like your good self, but also by, um, if I dare say it, more importantly, our customers. Um, and, um, you know, it's the most expensive watch we've ever sold arguably the best value watch we've ever sold uh, in many ways because um, of the level of um, finishing particularly that was inherent in the watch um, but to have sold it out as quickly as we did was a surprise to us all um, and very encouraging and has given us um, a lot of confidence about what we're going to be launching next October, November, which I'm, I'm, a, I'm afraid I can't really talk to you in detail about today um, I'd love to, but they'd, they, they'd kill me. Um, but is, um, I think even more special than the concept. You know, it's been a very busy six months since we last spoke because we've started with that concept piece and there's a lot more to talk about, including some new watches that are going to be released later today. Well, before we, before we move on to the, the new watches, I just wanted to talk about something else as well that, that you recently did. And that was the probably pertinent with with everything that's been going on in the world recently and that was the ukraine limited edition yeah uh yeah i mean um um you know it's it's uh it's it's i think been a um a reminder to all of us about the fragility of peace um and uh, um it was born of i mean i think like um like virtually everybody um in the civilized world at least um you you wonder what you can do practically to to lend a hand to give some support um, to particularly you know the Ukrainian people who are going through you know un, unimaginable um, hardships at the moment and uh, um, your Beda Junior who is our um, product development manager based in Beale um, called me when I was driving into the office um, one Monday morning several weeks back and. Uh, he likewise had been thinking what we could do, what he could do, what we could do as a as a as a business and a brand, and um, to to support them. And uh, he suggested to me that we could create a watch. And so um, we can do that, yeah. And so with the support of our suppliers, all of whom um, made huge contributions to reducing the cost price. We decided to launch a 300 piece limited edition called the C63 Ukraine, which essentially has the Ukrainian flag in its blue and yellow as the, the dial colors. All the proceeds, all the, all, all the sale proceeds will, uh, would be donated to the International Red Cross um, to support their efforts in Ukraine. And there is, we, we launched it, we sent it, we only sent an email to our database. We didn't, um, we weren't seeking um, uh, publicity uh, for it. We just wanted, uh, the, the entire business felt we, they wanted to do something. So we sent, uh, we sent the email to the database. Literally it sold out within hours. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, we've now got a, um, uh, um, a waiting list of a lot of people who uh, would, if, if, if there are cancellations um, when it arrives in July, they, they are on the waiting list. Um, I'm incredibly pleased to say that one of our 
collectors of Chris Ward watches um, contacted me at the weekend. Uh, he and his family are about to host a Ukrainian family. Um, and the young man, uh, whose name is Danny, uh, that's two eyes, I think, at the end of it, who has become the, the man of the house for his mother and his sister. Um, he's 18 in two weeks' time. And uh, Mark, uh, who's the name of the uh, our customer, uh, wanted to buy him a C63 Ukraine as a 18th birthday present. Of course, couldn't, went into the site, they were sold out. So we are, um, even if we have to break the 300 um, limited edition, we are going to um, make sure that Danny gets um, a Ukraine watch for his 18th birthday. So when these things are sort of that close to home, it really matters, doesn't it? And uh, so I'm very proud of um, both the team here, for Jorg, for even, you know, suggesting the idea for the team to get it all together in such a short space of time and for our suppliers uh, all of whom, every one of them came to the party. And so we've already sent more than £100,000 to um, to the uh, International Red Cross. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, a good news story in a world that um, is particularly short of good news. So we, we've been trying to help out some of our Ukrainian members on the Facebook group as well, and we'll continue to do that. But uh... Well done, you. Yeah. yeah. Now on to the main event, which is the new Aquitaine watches which are being released today I got a little sneak peek at an email that was sent over from from the team but I don't know a lot about them other than what was there except for the look I'd love to hear more ah well the C65 Aquitaine um I think it's arguably the most beautiful watch we've ever created and I wish I had a um, a pound or even a dollar for every time anybody who's seen it so far has told me that this is their favorite ever Chris Ward watch. Oh. So, um, which is uh, going to be interesting. Of course, it, um, it'll be the general public, the public at large, who will determine um, whether uh, they think it's also the most beautiful watch we've ever uh, created. But uh, it is, um, I think, a, a, an exceptional time, an exceptional, exceptional collection. It's, it's launching in three versions the automatic powered by the Sleetra w200 a gmt version um, which is powered by the 332 gmt movement and a bronze chronometer um, mm. based on the uh, sw200 uh, but the real hero of the um of the aquitaine uh, is the sapphire bezel and um it's a. It's um, clearly a, a in, in the parlance a retro dive watch. It's it's and as you will know, Sam. I mean, if you go back to the early fifties when uh, Jacques Yves Cousteau was uh, was scuba diving, um, he um, and by the way, his birthplace was Aquitaine. Oh, really? Oh, that's a nice tie-in. So a nice tie-in there. So. Uh, uh, so that's why it's uh, called uh, the Aquitaine. In the oh, it's not coincidental. <laughs> not coincidental, no. Uh, it's um, it's based on, and he. There, uh, if you go back to the the the, the start point of modern dive watches, um, the contemporary dive watch really, uh, and it's a fight between Rolex and Blancpain, isn't it, as to who got there first? Blancpain probably have the um, have it just with the fifty fathoms, um, and. Um, that was and uh, Cousteau worked with them on in the development of uh, of that. It was the first time a you know unidirectional bezel, um, you know, a watch could be used accurately uh, in scuba diving. At that time, the bezel, I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, was a Bakelite um, construction um, with the fifty fathoms. In more recent times, uh, they've unusually because. Sapphire is still, uh, in terms of um, bezels and dials, a very unusual material to use. Um, but they moved to um, a sapphire bezel. And when we were reimagining the C65 Trident Mark I, um, we set off, as we always do, to create a Mark II. It was the time in the cycle 
for a Mark II to come out. It was four years, um, still selling well, but we wanted to, you know, improve it. And therefore, the, the design and the product teams um, went through the usual cycle of looking at every aspect of of the watch for improvement. You know, um, you know, the, the, fin- the level of finishing on the on the applied indexes was improved. The luminescence was improved. Uh, the depth rating was improved to 200 meters from 150. Uh, we wanted to have uh, an enhanced sapphire dial. Um, uh, an enhanced sapphire dome, a crystal. Um, we wanted to unify, try and unify the design language to 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 our current design language. And they produced a great watch, which was very resonant of the Mark I. And the curmudgeonly CEO of Christopher Ward, um, yours truly, um, thanked them for their very hard work and sent them packing because it just wasn't cutting it. Um, it wasn't a, as big a move on as I think we'd hoped for. And so bless them. Um, I'm sure they left uh, the room muttering under their breath um, certain obscenities about the CEO. But um, um, they went back back to the drawing board, went back to influencers and came back with what became known as the Aquitaine. Um, and... It is there is there are definite design cues and there's a definite resonance to um, the fifty fathoms, although it's very much in our um, signature. Um, the proportions of this watch are exquisite in my view, and proportions in everything in design, as you know, is 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 a critical piece. And it's both the proportions and then the curvature that the sapphire bezel and the enhanced dome gives it. Um, which has created a sort of a, it's appealing as much to women as it is to men in our, mm. uh, in our work at the moment, in our testing of it at the moment. Um, but it's, it's feminine in, in the way that an E-type Jaguar is feminine. It's got, it's a lioness. This is no, you know, this is, this is the strength there. There's muscle there as well. Uh, but it's these beautiful curves in this beautiful proportionality. And of course, sapphire as a bezel gives us the opportunity which you don't get with ceramic ceramic is fanta- a fantastic um, material no question about it um not as strong as sapphire i mean if you take the Mohs scale of hardness you know sapphire um you know hits nine um the sort of ceramics that we all use in watches hits six or seven so it's a, a fantastically durable hard wearing material but the real benefit over ceramic that it has is you're very limited, unless you're Rolex, where you're able to uh, create your own ceramic mixes. Mm. Um, uh, the rest of us don't have access to. So you've got a very, very, very limited color palette in ceramic, which does not exist with sapphire. So we are able to produce almost any color um, we want going forward of the uh, of the um, of the Aquitaine. We've started with, I think, three real jewel like colors. Um, and um, there's a beautiful marine blue, we're calling it. There's a seagrass, which is a green, really lustrous. These are lustrous colors. And then a real sort of um, departure, um, which I can show you here. The listeners won't be able to see it. So, what we're calling white sand, which is in this case um, matched with the seagrass bezel. And um, it's it's the color it's the proportions it's this dual like property that sapphire and we you know we've worked really hard as a brand to to master sapphire it's not the easiest of um of materials to work with we we've if you'll forgive the uh, forgive the word but we've cracked it now in terms of dials which took us a good while to do on dial um we we we've got the scars on our back um and so it seemed a natural move to to then create this bezel. Um, and, you know, the guys brought it back um, and, and uh, the curmudgeonly CEO who'd, um, who'd um, sent them packing a, a few months earlier. Um, I, I can't remember being so delighted to see um, their work because it, it, it's stunning. And so... 
there is also, you know, it's also by, back to proportion. It, the, the, we're launching with 41 millimeters, although because we've reduced the lug to lug versus the, the original C65 by only a millimeter. Yeah, the lug to lug on the the Aquitaine is 40, just under 47 millimeters. It doesn't, you know, 41 millimeters feel, and because of the curvature of the watch, it feels less than 41 on the wrist. And that's another reason I think that it's it's seemingly picking up a lot of traction with people with smaller wrists, including women. Um, we think it could have real resonance um, in, the, in the Asian market, for instance, as well. Yeah. Um, but it's um, the, other, the other notable thing about it is um, this is our swish only moment. Um, uh, if we were Nike, we'd call it our swoosh only moment. But um, uh, being a, an Anglo Swiss um, watch brand, we thought swish only. So, this is the first watch of the future that will only carry on the dial the twin flags. Logo. I was dying to ask you about that. Uh, I'm sure you won't be alone. <laughs> Now, I mean, I, any, I think anyone that owns a Christopher Ward watch knows that having Christopher Ward on the dial is, it, it's part of the brand. It's not obtrusive at all on any of the watches, but the, I think the number one comment that you get when you're reviewing it is, oh, I wish it didn't have the name on the dial. And this, I, I, I just was smiling that this is finally of all of the positive things that we say about Christopher Ward on the channel in fact we've even been accused of uh, we've even been accused of casual watch talk being a, a pseudonym for Christopher Ward talk <laughs> <laughs> oh I've not heard that great I like it yeah I, no, I, that, <laughs> may it continue as far as I'm yeah <laughs> exactly we know Chris and I are, Chris and I are huge fans but yes now you, you're finally saying Guys, the name is not on the dial. Let me tell you a story, Sam, um, which um, which will be interesting to 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 your listeners and you, of course. Uh, back in um, back in 2015, when we developed the new um, the new um, logo and the new design architecture, we wanted to use just the twin flags logo on the dial. Yeah. However. When you create new logo types, um, you always have to put that in front of your lawyers. Our lawyers said that in the very litigious Swiss watch industry, um, some of there might be at least one of the major groups, no names, no pack drill, um, who might object to a something that um, looked like a Swiss flag. Yeah. Uh, therefore, whilst their view was you will definitely win because it's nothing like it. This is the, you know, as, as we know, this is a very litigious industry. Um, one of those companies, for instance, has 30, as I understand it, 38 law firms around the world who just trawl constantly for any infringement of any of their copyrights or trademarks. I mean, it's like incredible. Um, but the, the lawyers had said, look, our, our advice would be that you run it with alongside the name for five years. Um, after that time, you're not going to get any, any, any issues at all. Um, but our recommendation is that you should run it for, for a period of five years to, to, to gain usage rights. So we decided that was sound advice. We didn't want to be tied up in knots for years in expensive legal suits with people who have much deeper pockets than we have. So we took that route. I still really like the left aligned nine o'clock um, Chris Award, I, personally, I but like our, our original intention had always been to go twin flags only. And it's now beyond the five years. And I'm delighted to say that um, we're now a dial on the dial. Chris Ward will always be on the rotor arm and or the case back. Uh, and in the Aquitaine, where all of the watches are exhibition case backs, certainly this day, uh, Christopher Ward is on the rotor arm. You probably can't see it, but um, it's engraved onto the rotor. Um, and um, that's the way it's going to be going forward. And I think it'll, uh, we know from research we've done, and we know from many, many, many reams of, of copy that have been posted about, um, about our logos, that... Uh, the twin flags is universally loved um 
and um, it's a it's a meaningful symbol because it's it represents um, England and Switzerland. It's very meaningful to us. It also, I think, is um, is a very clever um, logo. So we're not pretending we're Nike, or we're certainly, but 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 you know, but a bit of uh, self deprecation in there as well. Swish only is uh, is the way we describe it internally, and uh, uh, but it also fits with some of the design language we've been developing over the last few years, which is, you know we've moved towards a um, six o'clock positioning of date windows. That's our default date window position. Love it. Huge fan. <laughs> I know. Um, and the Aquitaine has a six o'clock date window positioning. Mm. So there's a beautiful symmetry between the twin flags and the date window that I think will work on, uh, on, on, on all watches going forward. So it's, 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 it's a big moment for us. I know it'll, It'll gain a lot of uh, a lot of um, words online, um, but I, you know, we we we're very close, as you know, to um, to our forum, and uh, we we engage with our forum in um, in 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 design work that we're doing. We we use them as a feedback loop, early feedback loop, and also um, these are these are real watch aficionados themselves, most many of them, and they have really very interesting views on uh, on product and design and so we 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 you know where we think they're right um where they give us some fresh insight you know we listen and sometimes incorporate into our design we of course um talked to them about swish only and um they were um they were delighted and so uh, so hopefully it'll go down very well um but it is, it's the future of uh, the future of our dial. Yeah. And I'm sure in a couple of years, we'll be talking about the, the increase in the resale market of all the Christopher Wards that have the name on the dial. That will be, hopefully this will be your Rolex moment. With it, with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, and the, 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 and the other, there are some other things about the Aquitaine, by the way, that are, that are um, really exciting. And yeah. um, so we're introducing a, a brand new bracelet. Okay. Um, one of the other most remarked on, I mean, I think we've always produced great bracelets personally. Um, and okay. generally I think that's acknowledged. Um, if there was one criticism um, of our bracelets, uh, it's that the um, we don't have screw links. Um, they're pins. Yep. Um, this, the Aquitaine is launched um, with screws in the bracelet. It is also, so it makes it easier for people to, to exchange links. There's another development even a little further down the line where we continue to push the barriers in terms of engineering. I mean, people will not even know this has been done. We're, a, we're huge fans of, 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 of the engineering feats of Rolex. You'll remember that we spent many hours trying to uh, at least get as good as them on, um, bezel. on bezel clicks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, if I'm honest, uh, I'm, of course, the Aquitaine is, is using the new, the new mechanism that we developed for T3, Trident 3, um, in its 120-click um, uh, bezel. But we're not, we're, we think we're second um, to, to Rolex at the moment. We're, we're, we're working on that still. Uh, but they also, in our view, um, have the very best engineered bracelets. And... Um, We've worked tirelessly to create something inside the bracelet that only Rolex do. Originally, our manufacturer, who's a very, very, very uh, important manufacturer of bracelets, um, said it wasn't possible to do. Um, the development team, the product team, um, our engineers, and particularly your senior who spent many years um, in the bracelet industry himself. He's one of the great specialists. It's one of the reasons that our bracelets are so good is that Jorg um, was, I mean, Jorg, for instance, um, designed um, the butterfly clasp. Oh, wow. Uh, had he only had the foresight to register that design, he would probably be alongside Mark Zuckerberg now. Um, in oh, <laughs> the, the APs that have it and everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but he didn't. Um, but this is a man who has an intimate knowledge of the engineering of bracelets. 
And so he and our um, bracelet supplier um, have worked tirelessly, and we've now got a bracelet that is um, that is up there with the very best that is in exist, you know, that, that's out there. And so stage one is um, is um, is going to be the screwed links. Stage two will be something nobody will even know, but it will make a big difference. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because others will want to um, copy it. But uh, um, and that's that's the sort of you know, again, it's an example I think of the it's the details that make the difference. And, um, you know, the team here are absolutely into the details. Um, and, and the Aquitaine is, in terms of looking after the details, whether that be proportions, the, the colour, the use of materials, the engineering, uh, I, it's, it's a, it's a, I'm bound to say it sounds like you'd, 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 you'd think there was something wrong if it didn't, but I, I do think it's, it's, it's an advancement again, an advancement of um, of anything we've done before, and that's what we aim to do wherever we introduce the watch. Keep moving forward, and the team deserve huge congratulations. So there's a new bracelet. We're using a new um, a new quality of vintage oak leather for the strap. Beautifully supple. The finish on it is absolutely gorgeous, and so it's a a a real. Uh, as I say, I I think this is a this is going to be the third big platform for us. So there's the Tridents, there's the Sealander, the Aquitaine will be the third big platform and you'll have to wait till this time next year for the introduction of the fourth big platform because we've got something very special coming along and um, all things being equal in the world, not to, not uh, becoming uh, ridiculous. And uh, um, next May we'll be introducing the fourth platform. And so this constant building um is 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 really our major focus at the moment and um i can't wait for people to um give their feedback when they've um, seen um the aquitaine in the metal but i i think they're going to love it yeah I, there's some I, I really as soon as you see them they have a a f- familiar design if you from from vintage dive watches but they definitely has your own twist on it and i presume because you worked very hard on the light catcher case for the Trident and for the Sealander. So this, this is a different case in itself. It's not on that same light catcher. It's, it's uh, applying the same, it's a new case, um, uh, but it's still applying the same light catcher principles. Right. So the light, but it's a- every single case. I mean, this is uh, the height of these, of, of the Aquitaines. Each of the models is, um, is I think 12.45 millimeters high. So, um, but it was, I mean that's not high these days. I mean, um, but um, but there's definitely a trend, um, and you saw it at Watches and Wonders, I think. Um, which, I, by the way, I thought was an you know, although I didn't attend it, uh, you don't have to attend um, these days to, to be flooded with information. Yeah. I must say, I thought it was a really good show and a good yeah. a good show for the watch industry, and I think the industry has benefited from a bit of downtime over the last two years to to be more considered um, in what they're launching and get off the, the treadmill. Yeah. Um, and I, I thought there was some, I, th- I don't know what your view is, but um, I'd be interested to know, but I thought there was some really outstanding pieces. Oh, uh, no, I, I totally agree with you. That that Grand Seiko Turbion was was amazing. The, the constant force. Yeah, that, w- that, was, that was incredible. I, you know, Tudor came out with, with some great ones. I mean, that to your point about the fit, the black the black bay pro yeah and to your point that is quite thick isn't it that's 14 point something millimeters 14.95 uh, i think but this is this is 12.45 um but because of the light catcher design and it's the, the proportions are different because it's a different watch uh, to the tridents and to the sealander but it's still applying the same principles they're still applying the variation of um, finish on different facets all of which aims to reduce the height uh, in wear. So it wears very low. And that is a trend, as I was saying, that I think you're seeing. It, people are increasingly looking for watches that slip under uh, the shirt cuff. Yeah, it's funny what you said. It was when we were talking about watches and wonders on the on the podcast recently, we were talking about the, the left-handed GMT watch that, Rolex bought out, which I'm not sure is quite the gap in the market that, uh, well, perhaps it is, but I commented in there and I obviously, I haven't discussed this with you, but I commented in there that actually what 
Rolex should do is make dive watches that are more unisex in size because of the amount of, uh, you know, I've met a number of uh, women where they wear the Submariner, but they can't get the bracelet. So it was funny that you mentioned that this actually, that was part of the design idea with this, or at least it's like a fringe benefit that you found. It is, it is. And, and by the way, I mean, some of it was incorporated in because the other the other elements of the bracelet, so we've re-engineered the bracelet. That's, uh, we've also uh, re-engineered, re-engineered the tapering. The bracelet now tapers down to 16.5 mil from 22. So this is a beautifully elegant, and again, if I was to offer a criticism of ourselves, um, I think sometimes we've not tapered enough on our bracelets. So, but for this particular watch, it would have been a crime not to have taken that tapering down as, as far because it's such an elegant watch. And as you say, to your point, this, this move towards you know smaller, wearing smaller, slightly more feline feminine design that also women are comfortable to wear that was very much in our thinking and i just think that's why we're getting such a positive response from women to to this watch as well yeah it's interesting you you just talking about I, i love the the bracelets that's on this christopher ward i think the once you have a, a watch that has your system of extension on it i i must change if it's a hot day i must you know click that thing up and down but it's interesting that you were talking about taking inspiration from rolex for the bracelet because i think if if you're not familiar with handling rolexes where the bracelet is or is it's surprisingly light for for how for the actual watch that that can sometimes be a surprise when you pick one up just how light the bracelet is so um yeah it's, it's quite cool that you've obviously recognized that yourself and you're taking inspiration and their, their engineering, their levels of engineering that are exceptional. Um, so, um, yeah, we, 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 we would like to uh, be informed by the best wherever the best is. Mm. There's just one other thing about the Aquitaine that I'd just like um, to mention, which is um, we've had a, a close relationship with Blue Marine Foundation for a number of years now. Um, you know, for a small company like us, um, I'm really proud that we've contributed, donated, um, you know, close to a quarter of a million pounds um, to their drive to um, reduce overfishing of our oceans, which has a major impact on climate change. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Aquitaine, Dive Watch, um, Eve, you know, influenced uh, and inspired by Eve, um, uh, Jacques-Yves Cousteau, um, we felt it appropriate that... Um, uh, every single Aquitaine that is ever sold, 5% of the sale proceeds will go to Blue Marine Foundation. So um, it's now sort of embedded in as part of the Aquitaine. So that's a, you know, that's a, that's a, a really positive thing that, uh, that we can do again to, to support the other major issue for the world at the moment, which is, uh, which is climate change. And the Blue Marine, yeah. Blue Marine Foundation are a fantastic charity and people are waking up at long last to the importance of um, the oceans in helping us to keep our temperature rises down. Seagrass is one of the, um, the key carbon sinks that people never really understood. Seagrass um, is, is, is more important than rainforests in keeping our temperature down people wow. don't know that we all of the all of the work and rightly so all of the conversation all of the worry about rainforests seagrass has been uh, depleted at a, at a faster rate even than the rainforest and they're more important hence why one of the colors of our aquitaine is called seagrass but five percent goes to um, blue marine foundation and uh, to continue their really important and excellent work in that field wow well i certainly can't wait to to get my hands on a on one so i can do a review on the channel and if people are lucky enough to be at the wind up watch fair this week this will be the first chance that the public will be able to get their hands on these watches is it it is we're we're literally launching it in the metal at wind up in uh, in san francisco and uh, we'll have a team there i'm going to be there and four members of the team are going to be there. And we'd love to uh, love to 
meet, welcome and meet and chat to any of your listeners who uh, who uh, happen along to uh, to the uh, the wind up fair. It's going to be great fun. Mm, that's awesome. Friday through fr- Friday through Sunday, I think. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Mike, thanks so much for joining me. Guys, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. As always, we appreciate you watching and listening, and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Talk. Thanks, guys. Bye. Cheers. Always a pleasure.